We have big goals for our family, and with that comes juggling a lot of projects at once and knowing when to ask for help. We can't do everything, obviously. Um, we're more focused on getting our house buttoned up and then starting the backs of the house. With our sights set on breaking ground on the bedroom wing in the next month, we call in reinforcements to the renovation house, and back home we move forward with our 100 by 100 garden. I just can't wait to come ahead and start eating fruit. We are making progress on both fronts and seeing our property blossom and sustainability as the renovation house is simultaneously being brought back to life. Put this house back together and make it a home for somebody else. Our farm, our garden, our home build, our renovation house, our family. Oh, we're rocking and rolling, baby. <laughs> <laughs>
and like butter, no issues. This sixth one's being a little bit of a pain. Um, it's a lot of rock there. We're probably going to relocate that a few feet over to get away from the rock. Um, the directions that came on the tags with these trees, they need uh, 20 feet of spacing in between. So we're spacing them, yeah, 20 feet apart. So we're coming 10 feet off the fence and 20 feet in between. So the way it's going to pretty much lay out, we have a 100 feet by 100 feet. So we're going to roughly going to come off 50 feet this way. Is that right? I second guess myself for a second, but that, that's correct. So um, <laughs> we're going down. It's gonna be five trees down that way in a row. We're gonna come over uh, one row and do five more down that way. So it's a total of 10 trees. And like I said, 20 foot spacing. We're 10 feet off the fence on all sides. So we should be good. And these are these are semi dwarf trees. So they're not they're not dwarf trees. That's why like they need a little bit more spacing than the dwarf trees. Yes, and the dwarf, we didn't go dwarf because they don't live as long. The yes. semi-dwarf live longer and we're going to be here forever, so I don't want to replant these things in 10, 12 years, <laughs> right? Yeah. We're going to be adding a little bit of topsoil underneath and around the plants. They do sit in a compostable pot so mm -hmm. they're just able to be directly planted and then once we get all of these put in we're just going to backfill with the natural soil that we already have here. Yeah this, this soil is uh, it's a little sandy with uh, a little bit of clay so it's not too it's not bad. It's, it's not. It's decent. Yeah. It'll work. Today is our last day at the machine. They came and picked it up. We're planning on digging everything out and putting loose dirt back in. It's about 12 inches high. Then we're going to put a little soil in there and work it all around. But uh, it came a little bit earlier than planned. We so ran out of time. We ran out of time. And now we got to do it with a little bit of manpower. <laughs> so it is. A couple shovels. A guy and a gal getting it in. <laughs> So I had to run to the uh, local mulch plants right about five miles away and get some more topsoil. So we really quickly re realized how short we were. Yeah. The reason why is we, we used the excavator, the little mini esc, because out of I guess comfort, you could say, we had it here. So Inconvenience. Con that's the word I was looking for, not comfort. Yes. Convenience. Thank you. She has the words that I don't have, guys. <laughs> so we used it for that versus using a shovel. Um, I think the best route would have been to get like a 24 inch auger on a uh, skid steer and just drill down and make it all like that. It would have been a lot easier. But we didn't want to rent another machine. No. We used what we already had we here from do doing it, the sidewalk. We want to dig all this out with the shovel too because we'd no. we still be digging. Yes, no so, way. <laughs> we're dealing with it. So it's starting to drizzle. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to call it a night. It's not supposed to be super windy. So I think that they're going to be okay be. until we come back through and we're going to put in some like tea stakes and some wire in the ground to help support them. The one thing, we, yes. Yep. The one thing we are going to do though, before we go is put these little like bark rabbit guard 
type things yes. around the bottom to keep anybody from coming and like gnawing on the freshly planted fruit trees. And the guy at the nursery said this should stay on for what two to three years? Yes. Yeah. So they, they open up and so the bigger they get, they spread open. He also mentioned though that if you don't have any of these but you do have PVC pipe lying around, you could use that you, as well. Yeah, you could probably cut a little portion and slot it on. Yeah, so good to know. But we've got a couple. Yep. We're going to cut a couple and protect these at all costs, at all right? Costs. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't wait to come ahead and start eating fruit. Me either. About four years from now. It's exciting because it's kind of a new chapter for us, yes. like getting started on the garden and getting everything done. And my favorite thing about this place so far are the pear trees that we planted because we love pears, but Chucky loved pears. And so we planted a bunch of pear trees in memory of Chucky. Yes. And he would love it here. Yeah, I think Frank likes apples. Chuck yes. pears. So there's some for everybody. Hey guys, just a friendly reminder that meal planning and shopping for all those dinner ingredients doesn't have to be a part of your to-do list. There's an easier way, trust me. Every Plate is the sponsor of this video and is bringing ease and convenience directly to your door. Every Plate plans, shops, and delivers everything you need to cook a delicious meal at a consistently low price. Choose from 17 delicious weekly recipes that change each week and swap proteins, veggies, and sides to your liking. For those of you looking for a quick and satisfying fix, Every Plate now offers recipes that come together in as little is 20 to 25 minutes with easy cleanup options. And if you're like me, you employ a little bit of help and it goes together even faster. While most meal kits come with a premium price tag, Every Plate offers delicious dinners that won't break the bank, like the one that we're having tonight, Hoppin' John's Rice. With cannelli beans, tomato, and collard greens, it's gonna be delicious. And with six simple steps, I have got dinner all pulled together and we're ready to eat. Try Every Plate for just $1.79 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code WILDWONDERFULOFFGRID179. That's everyplate.com, code WILDWONDERFULOFFGRID179 to try every plate for just $1.79 per meal. You ready to eat? Yep. Oh, Mommy, that looks pretty. It looks good, right? Yeah, let's try one of these beans. Mm. You like it? Yeah. With the garden underway and the walk by concrete on hold until Friday, we continue making progress at the renovation house. This home has been abandoned for years now and is in need of a full gut. The more we dig in, the more problems we find that we need to fix. Little by little, we are peeling back the layers of this old house and before long, it will be beautiful once again. Is it just me or does it feel like having the place cleaned out like this really shows the potential? It does. Um, so a lot of people are gonna really excited to get started. Who's got it? It's a mess. Finally having the house all cleared out like this makes us really excited to get going and dig our hands into this place and kind of breathe some life back into it because the way that it is currently sitting and has been sitting for years now has it just kind of crumbling on itself. It's just, it's going to waste. Somebody needs to come in and take care of it and put it in the hands of a new family to move in here. We don't really know the full story of the house. It was sold by family members and they did come in and they removed everything that they wanted out of the house before it was in our hands. We've kind of just been hearing things through the grapevine between the two different realtors. And other than that, I don't think it's really our story to tell anymore that we know. It's just our story now to put this house back together and make it a home for somebody else.
So we're gonna work on getting all this overgrowth cut down. As you guys can see, it's all grown up and over the deck and pretty much impeding on the house. So we're gonna cut it all out. And once that's cut out, we can work on getting this deck pulled out and get everything cleaned up. For a new deck. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's take that machine, pull the rest of it off. Let's get the guard to come off and we'll go to the front. It looks so good already. Guys, I haven't it, even looked it, at it yet. It opened everything up. It's it's getting cleaned up. It looks good. I can already picture somebody having some family cookouts out here. Oh man. Yeah, it's been neglected for years, obviously. Yeah. It is time to tear off this rotting deck and replace it with a new one. catch you guys up on the progress being made. If you guys look behind me, it's all covered in roofing underlayment. We hired a group of guys to do a lot of things here because we can't do everything, obviously. Um, we're more focused on getting our house buttoned up and then starting the backs of the house. So we can't be here, home, also a trout pond house. So we have a few guys doing a few things, but they pulled the side of the house off for the uh, two by 12s. As, as you guys remember, the two by 12s are spaced a little too far apart. So we're pushing two by 12s up through the middle and the best way is to get it through the side of the house and up there to get that entire roof jacked up in the right location. First thing I'm gonna do with this upper deck is I'm gonna take the uh, forks from the skid steer. I'm gonna push the upper deck up, take my chainsaw and cut those four by fours off. The deck is leaning a little bit. I think that those four fours are giving a little bit of help holding it up. It's not gonna fall when I pull those out, 
but I just don't want to pull this bottom deck out that being attached. It could cause an issue. So once I get those cut out, I'm going to go to the lower deck and do what I did like on the front side or the back side of the house and take my chainsaw and run right down the front of it and cut it out and then take the skid steer and pull this deck out. But when Justin gets here, he's going to take his big excavator that's here. It's a bucket with a thumb on the uh, excavator. He's going to grab the deck. We'll take a chainsaw, whop it off. We'll take the <laughs> excavator. We'll just pull that deck right on down. That's how it's going to go. Would you hope no, I, I'm I'll make it work. We are still. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it will. <laughs> we got the skills. Today has been a massively successful day for us. We got all of the brush removed mm -hmm. from all sides of the house, everything that was overgrown, all of the trash is picked up, the front deck and the back deck Going. are removed, mm -hmm. and it, it's looking fantastic already. So the next thing, we've got to replace the roof, pull the siding down, wrap the house, put the siding back up. Between that, we got windows coming out, windows going in, and complete renovation on the inside. So we're rocking and rolling, baby. <laughs> <laughs> With all the brush cleared away and the new driveway put in, we are ready to plant new grass and begin work on the exterior of the house. A new roof is being put on this week, all the siding will be removed, and new decks built on the front and back of the house. The layout of the interior has been reworked. We designed the new kitchen and ordered both kitchen cabinets and new windows for the entire house. It is so rewarding to see this little house open up to the mountain views again and begin to be restored. So do you think if we do three tea stakes, that'll be enough to support it in a wire? Yeah. Yeah, probably two wire. Okay. Do you have the stuff to tie the branches on? No. Do you have another idea for it? I think so. You'll come up with something. We're going to be using some tea stakes and some wire to get all of these trees sturdied up a little bit because they are so young and so like fragile at this point that when the time comes that we do get the really strong winds that we get here, we risk them just tipping over. So they need a little bit of support for a while. Frankie, are you supposed to have that egg? I 
We have four apple, four pear, and two peach. I'm excited about this. I know, me too. It's a start, that's for sure. You're gonna wait, what, four and a half, five years? <laughs> Just think, four, four years, years ago we didn't have a house. So, sure. four more years, we'll Lots have fruit. peaches. <laughs> no matter what I know, I can't let you go. I can't let you go